Well, the first thing you should do when you before upgrading is to do a backup of your previous uh, firmware. You can do the, that with uh, some of the utilities that you can find in the David Alpha post. To be able to save or restore the firmware to a USB pen, we should download the backup builder uh, from the David Alpha post on EVV blog. You have here the file, just press the right button and download. Back to the oscilloscope. As usual, you connect the drive to the USB socket. Wait a bit for being recognized and then go to utility update update firmware and locate the backup builder on the list uh, here it is using the knob just press and start update this operation will take a few minutes and it will create two, fo two files in the USB pen. I will explain those files in a bit. This system is very useful, but it has a problem that is uh, you can only recover if you can access and use the update function of your oscilloscope. If you can't use the, that update function, those files will not uh, be usable for anything. So if you have a bricked oscill oscilloscope, uh, yeah, this backup will not uh, solve any problem. For that, you have on the part two of this video, the solution and how to restore a bricked oscilloscope. Okay, it seems the backup it's done. So it's booting again. Let's wait a, a bit for the USB drive being recognized. It's here already. And I should be able now to see on update, firmware update, the two, two new files created. Okay, here they are. And I will explain what are the functions of these two files next. Regarding the two files written in the USB pen, you have the first one that can be used to restore the model, serial, hardware, firmware and generated calibration, but it will preserve the existing software. Regarding the second one, it will restore uh, the same and also overwrite the existing software. So you have two chances for restore in the future. To be able to do a backup, a restore, we will need the DSO flash tool. We have it here in the David Alpha post on EVV blog. And you have in this, in this location, the the link, just press it, and the new Google Drive will appear. You have the driver english.pdf and readme uh, help files, but those are also inside the dsoflash.zip. So just select it, and with the right button of your mouse, just select download. After download, just unzip this file to a folder, and that's it. Now it's time to learn how to boot the oscilloscope in fail mode. For that, with your oscilloscope with the bottom up, just press the fail button while you power on. The fail button is located between the cooling hole in the bottom of the oscilloscope and when you press it you should hear a click. As you can see the screen will stay black. Don't worry, that's normal. But at this point, you should boot in your PC the Zedig application that comes inside the DSO Flash package that you just downloaded. This is the Zedig application. Uh, you should boot this after entering the fail mode on Handtech. 
When you boot, you should come to Options and use and select the option List All Devices. You will have a list of devices here. This is all my devices, USB devices on, on my computer. And I already have here an Hantec DSO 2000. This was renamed by me. You can choose here, Edit. And I already installed the, dri the driver, but uh, in some cases, and that was my case, it will not have the description that uh, the, the manual says that is USB device uh, with some reference. But what is important is that you have here the USB ID. You have to locate the device that has this ID, 1F3A EF68. And when listing the devices, you can see that this ID changes. You have to locate the uh, device that has this ID that I just told you. When you f find this device, you can, if it's not uh, with the name that you want, you can edit the name in here, the SO. You can put your, your oscilloscope model and name. And after, you just uh, press this button. Right now I have reinstalled driver, but if it is the first time that you are installing, it should say install driver. And that's it. You will have the driver installed for the several operations that will, you will need to do. In the folder that you just unpacked, you will have the Zadig application that you just run. And you will have also the read bat and write bat. Those are two shortcuts, two scripts to do a backup, the read bat, and to do a restore uh, of your firmware to the oscilloscope. You, if you want to do a backup, you just double click on this one and it will open a window that will start uh, a backup. I already have here a backup.bin. This backup will take from 40 to 50 minutes, so it will take almost an hour. I already have here one. As you can see, it has one, uh, 135 megabytes. If you want to restore this firmware, you just need to rename it to restore.bin, and after you just press the right bat, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is just show you how to do a backup and I will fast forward the, the video so you can see what happens. If this video was useful to you, please give a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you do, don't forget to hit that bell and activate all notifications to be the first one to be notified whenever I post a new video. That's it for today. Stay safe and I hope to see you in my next video. Cheers!